heart disease is 100% preventable. This video I want you to use as a tool to keep your heart healthy. This is a great muscle, I love it, but that's the most important muscle right there. No one's gonna argue that. Here we go. Number one is maintaining a healthy weight through diet and exercise and behavior. How do you maintain the healthy weight? Get a scale. And again, I'm giving secrets and techniques I've seen work for thousands of people as a primary care doctor. Get a scale. Weigh yourself several times a week, if not every day. Some people feel it's a little too obsessive. Most people will look at it in the morning. They see what they weigh. When you get to your goal weight, and it tells you you're two or three pounds up, that day you could very easily pull back some foods, some calories, and then the next morning you'll see you're back down. See that? It's so simple, modulating day by day. Get a scale, the diet, let's talk about the diet. Caloric restriction, low inflammatory diets, low sugar, sugar is the worst poison, processed foods, animal fats. Now. There is controversy on the old-fashioned low-fat diet, the saturated low, not to mention animal-fat diet, versus today where you have ketogenic diets, very low carbohydrates that look to be protective, but despite that, they're relying on animal fats. We're not going to go into it. Give me comments. This is incredible. There's controversy, even with the top academic cardiac health experts in the world on that topic right there. So that's diet. Exercise. You use exercise to enjoy exercise, not just to burn off the food you're eating. That's actually potentially very dangerous and inflammatory. You use exercise as a modulation and behavior. You do it regularly every day. The recommendation for heart health is high intensity interval training. Look this up and work it into your life. Next, you can't smoke. There's no smoking. There's no hating on smoking people, but you can't. Smoking is so damaging for the heart and other issues with cancer. Next, moderate alcohol intake. Women one drink, men two drinks. Again, controversy on this. Be careful with that. Next, drugs, overall drugs. There's no hate on people who use drugs from me, but amphetamines for weight loss and ADD. These are prescription drugs, not to mention crack and cocaine. These are very dangerous for the heart. Blood pressure, direct effects on the actual heart tissue itself. Cardiomyopathy, that's called, at least a heart failure. I see it. I've seen it for decades. So drugs, be very careful. If you're on prescription amphetamines or narcotics for chronic pain, you have to be careful. Be very careful and try to get a plan to get off or to limit the use, drug holidays. Next, stress. Um, see that? Stress, even for me. Type A people, certainly like myself, you can be successful. But I've seen people that on paper look great for heart health, at least early in their life, and then they have a heart attack or a bypass, or we do the calcium score and they have plaque, and we say, why? They look perfect, blood pressure is perfect, cholesterol is perfect, no diabetes, no impairment in fasting glucose. They don't smoke cigarettes. Stress kills. You see, this is gonna be a multifactorial presentation. Relaxation, meditation, the exercise, mindfulness. Really try to use these. They really, really work. Work them into your behavior. Now, diagnosing heart disease. Again, use this video is a tool and a guide to work with your caregivers on this. The classic cardiac risks, medically, hypertension, prehypertension, blood pressure. On this, that's gonna be stressful for the arteries. You wanna check your blood pressure, you wanna check it. My recommendation is a manual blood pressure cuff. I did a video on how to do your own blood pressure manually because I don't like the automated 
cuffs because they're not so accurate. Especially if you have a big arm, you have to be very careful. When you take blood pressure, sitting down quietly, feet on the ground, no noises, relax, set it up, pump it up, take it properly. You can do both arms. You want to see what that number is. It is true that blood pressure in the doctor's office may not be an accurate representation of your true blood pressure. So check the blood pressure. I can't tell you how important that is. Next classic risk, lipids, hypercholesterolemia, dyslipidemia. What this is, those are those lipid fatty particles, LDL, HDL, triglycerides. That is the basic. Start with the basics. You want to go advanced? You could look at apolipoprotein B, which can be inherently dangerous for people, certainly with family histories. LP little a, start with the basics, and then potentially you can work yourself up if you want to look at other lipid abnormalities. I recommend working with a board certified internist, cardiologist, or a lipidologist. Next, classic, decades old, basic risk factor, processing of sugar. Diabetes, this is mainly type two diabetes, when people get older and they start getting heavier, type two diabetes, and pre-diabetes, impairment in fasting glucose. I work with it all day long. You wanna get a basic metabolic panel. You wanna get a glucose fasting for 12 hours. You wanna get a hemoglobin A1C. That is a test that sees your average sugar, how you've looked 24 seven for the past three or four months. You wanna look at that. Please get that. I do this every day. Other medical issues that if you have, definitely can lead to early or worsened heart disease. Inflammatory disease, inflammatory disease, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, other autoimmune diseases, obstructive sleep apnea, chronic kidney disease. You see, you want to get a good history and physical. Next, family history of early heart disease, the coronary artery disease. These are so easy to look at, these questions. When you put it together in the end, you'll see the interpretation, what you can do about it. Father or brother, if that person has had heart disease diagnosed equal to or less than 55 years old, mother or a sister, primary sister, relative, heart disease equal to or less than 65, those are gonna be seen as true risks. Continuing onward with diagnosing heart disease. Coronary artery calcium score, electrocardiogram, echocardiography. I can't tell you how important these are. Again, these are basic ones. We're gonna start with the basic ones. The resting ECG. The data in the past was very important to look at this. Current data says that you have to be careful how you interpret a resting 12 lead ECG for a person that doesn't have heart disease. Again, all this is for diagnosing and staying heart healthy, so it's primary prevention. Not a person that already has heart disease. Be very clear about that. So, ECG, of course, if you go to a doctor or a cardiologist, they're gonna get it, but let them interpret that. The one that is the most important is gonna be for a person that's free of disease, that's 30 years old to 50 years old. This is supported by the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association. If you're intermediate risk and you really wanna see what you got in there, coronary artery calcium score. It's a low dose radiation, CT scan of the chest, dialed down, and it looks for the plaque that's calcified. It's brilliant and it, it's amazing. You could look at these numbers and you can put the whole picture together to prevent heart disease from progressing. So the calcium score. Echocardiogram, if you have hypertension and you can get enlarged heart and lead to heart failure, you're gonna see years of hypertension this left ventricle will get thicker and thicker, and getting your muscle thick and thick is awesome, but this muscle you don't want thickened. I can tell you that. This, and this has nothing to do with steroids. This is a steroid-free discussion. Steroids, obviously, and testosterone can affect that, and that's why I take care of these men very particularly. Back to the echocardiogram. You wanna look at an echocardiogram, you wanna have a real expert 
echocardiographic certified doctor, cardiologist reading the data. Very careful. Next, onward with diagnosing, stress tests. There's a basic treadmill, Bruce protocol. Then there's stress test with imaging. That's gonna be, it's, it's a contrast dye. It's a nuclear tracer dye. And they also have a stress echo. You have to be very careful with this. This is cardiology guys only. This is something I never do. If I want it done, I work with a cardiologist on this. Some places in the world, unfortunately, they have non-cardiovascular experts doing these tests. You can get in a lot of trouble. The test can be overread and false positive, or they can miss something. In my opinion, you need to be a board certified cardiologist experienced in reading these tests. Next, angiography, that's invasive. It's not a coronary artery calcium score. I get that every single day. Doc, is this a calcium score? Is this an angiogram? No, my insurance is gonna cover it. No, 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 the calcium score is super cheap. It's about 20 seconds of radiation equal to a mammogram that we give to women that are 40 and older to prevent and to look and screen for breast cancer. So it is very, very safe. It's not an invasive angiogram. Next, the interpretation of all this data is so important. So here we go. What's going to happen when an expert doctor who's experienced takes this data in? Your age, your family history, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your advanced cholesterol, if you have family history, diabetes, pre-diabetes, your smoking history, your alcohol intake, your other drug use, other medical issues, the calcium score, the echocardiogram. You see this, the interpretation, this is the hardest part. This is where it's very difficult to pull this together and to coordinate this. How much risk do you want to take? This is the point where an expert caregiver that can pull all this data together can sit with you and say, here's your risk. And it's all evidence-based. We have tons of evidence. And then I always say to patients, beyond the fact that this, you have serious heart disease, we have to do something. You have tons of plaque in the artery. Look at your risks. We have to help you. But then you say to people, how much risk are you willing to take? You really have to ask that question. And you don't do it as a wise guy. You work with people on this. Now, the treatment plan, obviously in the end, is the most important sustainable piece when you take all this information in. Diet and exercise and behavior changes. Everyone talks about it, everyone looks about it, but please understand this, despite being in great shape, having great behavior, diet, not smoking, not drinking excessively, and having good genes, if you get older, you're gonna have some heart disease. This is so important to look at. Protective measures, that's so important. Let's talk about the protective means with supplements and medicines. And I'm not your medical doctor, this is not medical advice. The protective supplements that there's tons of evidence for apart from having a great diet. And this is very basic. Vitamin C is positive. Turmeric and curcumin, in my opinion, is very positive. Vitamin D, not excessive. MK7 with vitamin D. Ubiquinol, especially with statins. That's a really refined CoQ10. Coffee and tea, they're kind of supplements if you look, barring the excess of caffeine, are protective. Omega-3 fatty acids, the studies on fish oil are incredibly controversial, but there's no question that some of them, depending on who you are and what you take, can really help lower inflammation and definitely prevent the progression of heart disease if you have it. But no one's gonna argue that just eating really clean fish several times a week is the most important piece. But I like omega fatty acids and it's very complicated. I have to look at those independently for each patient. Low dose aspirin is actually a medicine, but I'll put it in here because it is over the counter and people take it and they just think it's gonna be preventing their heart. You see the data in 2019 that came out, huge studies about the potential dangers on just low dose aspirin. It's all about bleeding. 
stomach bleeding, even potential strokes and hemorrhagic strokes. And I've even seen men on low dose aspirin have blood in their ejaculate. And that's just scary because it looks like maybe they have prostate cancer or something going on. So again, this is no joke. Low dose aspirin, you need to have a medical expert to make a recommendation for this if it's gonna benefit you versus the risks. Now, the medicines that I wanna be very general about. Medicines, number one, don't just say no. Just don't say no. I'm on medicines. My medicines I'm on are heart protective and I'm 55 years old and I feel phenomenal. That's why I'm leading this. I run this, I live this, the way I presented this to you, all for myself with my expert doctors as well as we work together on this. Blood pressure, you have to check blood pressure. There are protective medicines for decades that you could use early. You could use them alternatively dosed. There are lipid medicines. Just don't say no to those statins. There are secret other drugs that we have that are not secrets that doctors know. Lipidologist, internist, cardiologist, other experts in the world, you could put together a regimen, not just every day and not just being toxic. I take these medicines, I'm begging you to believe me that there's a balance in putting these together because just living super clean and exercising, you could go forward and have heart disease. Matter of fact, if you're gambling in Vegas, you're gonna have heart disease. And even if it's at 75 or 80, could you prevent that and live a long life completely free of coronary artery disease or stabilize what you have. This is important, the lipids. The diabetes aspect, there are medicines available early. Some of these medicines are dirt cheap, they've been around for decades, and with a proper healthcare provider, you can put a regimen together with your diet, your exercise, focus medicines, and you can live a long life, feeling like a million bucks, and you can just keep living, keep trucking on. I really hope this presentation helps. Please see my other videos on heart health and please utilize your really excellent healthcare providers. Thank you so much.